All right, JD here. So one of my favorite teams, the 1995 California Angels before they were called the Los Angeles Angels or Anaheim Angels. I love this team a lot. And when I was younger, I was kind of getting into arguments or debates with friends that I thought this team was the best offense in baseball. Part of it was just me being unique, but also I really did believe it in a way. At first with that lineup, uh, Tony Phillips' is leadoff hitter, he came over in a trade and he was just one of my favorite players of all time. I mean, he just had a knack for just getting on base, he had one of my favorite betting stances. Then betting second was Jim Edmonds. And this was like the year 1995 where Edmonds really came alive. He really exploded on the scene. He had over 30 home runs. And around this time, like the number two hitters on baseball teams, they're basically the people who had good back control, maybe possibly due for a hit and run, you know, stuff of that nature. And like nowadays, you have the number two hitters who are like your best run producers or the best, uh, has the best team OPS. But back then, like Marcel Latchman, who was the manager of the Angels, it's like he was a trailblazer in a way to uh, put Edmonds, a 30 home run guy, bet in the number two spot. At number three, you had Tim Salmon, who was a dangerous hitter for some uh, seasons. Then at number four, you had Chili Davis, who was a very good hitter in his own right. Then also at number five, you had JT Snow, who had a really good 95 season. And at number six, you had a rookie named Garrett Anderson. The guy could hit. I mean, he was a doubles machine. He was a very good hitter. If you take a look at this lineup, one through six, I mean, this is a very good lineup. I mean, back in 1995, this was a very good lineup, one through six. And like I said, I thought in a way that this was better than the Indians lineup. Then at the bottom three, you had like Easley, Fabregas, and then you had Gary DeSarcina. I'll say this about Gary DeSarcina. Back then before like Tejada, Rodriguez, Jeter, and Garcia Parra, like the shortstop was not really seen as an offensive position. But nonetheless, uh, Gary DeSarcina, who bet over 300, that's pretty good for shortstops back then. So the Angels, uh, the starting staff, I think they were ranked seventh out of 14 teams in American League. I think around like mid-July or August, around there, they were tops in run differential and they were really good. I mean, they had a really good July going 17 and three and they were just pounding the ball. They had, like I said, they had a really good lineup. But then something strange. In mid-August, they had a 10 and a half game lead over the Texas Rangers and an 11 and a half game lead over the Seattle Mariners. And what happened then for the rest of the season, beginning at the end of August, is that the California Angels had two nine-game losing streaks, which is just unheard of. Part of that also came during Cal Ripken's record-breaking game that broke Lou Gehrig's consecutive game streak. But nonetheless, the Mariners, they caught up to them. California had to win their last five to go to a one-game playoff. The Mariners, they had Randy Johnson, he was the AL Cy Young Award winner. And basically, I think you can kind of guess what happened. The Angels got destroyed. But I love this 95 Angels team. And they wouldn't go back to playoff contention until 2002, and which they won the World Series. And that's it. And just want to thank everybody. Just thank you so much. And, you know, be safe and take care. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this 90 Sports video. I greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Check out the links below like Patreon. Thank you so much.